Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for a very special Technique Talk. I recall Central Park and Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Artifact Percussion, Zero Gravity Percussion, Robert Utomo, Taylor Murphy, Lucas Turner, Will Flinner, and Andrew Bullington. Thank you so much for joining the studio VIP team. And today's featured studio artist is Stephen Arkindle. Thank you so much for joining the studio artist team. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash untan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show. Now, before I get into this Technique Talk episode, I just want to say thank you for joining us on the stream or in real life at Song and Dance, which was our recital in Melbourne last week. It was a great concert, a great audience, great group of people to play with, great group of people who helped us out. Thank you so much for all the support. Now, of course, if you didn't get to make it to the show or if you didn't get to make it onto the stream, that's okay. I'm going to be uploading the performance videos from the concert on this channel. So if you want to be the first person to see that, make sure you hit the red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. But anyway, today's Technique Talk episode is completely different from any of the Technique Talk videos I've done so far because it's not about performance, it's about composition. Following the release of my two marimba solos, Path and Moon, which you can check out in the description below, as well as my brand new marimba duo, Meet Again, which is coming out very soon, a lot of you guys have been asking me to talk about my compositional process or what I do to help me compose marimba music. And of course, I am not a professional composer. I'm not someone who you would say has written lots and lots of works. I'm not even like a professional percussionist composer like someone like Pius Chang or Casey Cancellosi or even my friend Rob Utomo. Like, these guys are way better than me. But I love the thought of seeing more people add to the list of marimba repertoire because as you know, we don't really have much marimba repertoire available to us because the instrument is so new. Like if you have a violin, you have hundreds and hundreds of years of repertoire. We'd be lucky if we got like 50 years of repertoire. So of course I like to see more people writing for the instrument. I mean, a lot of the popular marimba solos out nowadays have been written in the last 20 years. So it's getting more and more popular to write as well as play the instrument. Any help I can give, I would love to do so. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you five tips to writing your first marimba solo. Now, of course, these tips could probably stretch to any instrument or any type of composition for percussion, but I'm going to stick it to marimba because that's the only stuff that I've released so far. So if you want to see examples of my work, you can see them on my channel in the description below. Speaking of which, I have something very interesting to tell you about my marimba duo that's coming out very, very soon. You'll see that at the end of this video. So tip number one. Get an idea. Now, what do I mean by get an idea? Obviously, it's very easy to say, well, to write, obviously, you need to get an idea first. No. But I'm not talking about a musical idea. I'm talking about a non-musical idea. And I say this because a lot of people write marimba solos, specifically marimba solos, with little to no backstory or theme or anything to really explain why it's written. If you think about some of the most well-known marimba works on the repertoire lists right now, they all have some sort of overarching theme or some sort of backstory that makes the piece a little bit more enjoyable and a little bit more memorable and also gives you ideas about why it's written in that way. For example, if I use some of the pieces from Song and Dance, Lemuria. is about the fallen civilization of Lemuria and it's falling apart and it's exploding going blah, 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 blah. and all the stylistic things in the music sort of point to that backstory. Similarly, we play Pius Chung's Nocturne in F major. And Nocturne generally implies nighttime, and Pius' backstory was that he was living in New York City and it was too noisy, so the whole piece as a result is very quiet. Or even something like the second movement of Merlin. Which is about losing time, losing order in the world. And you can hear it in the piece, it gets more and more frenetic, more and more chaotic until everything just goes So as you can see from these examples, a theme or a story really helps these pieces grow. So I highly recommend before you start writing your piece, get the idea, place it down and write your piece around that idea so that you have a direction to proceed in. So that way when you're writing, you don't get lost. Tip number two is to improvise on the marimba. 
So all of my pieces came from improvisation on the marimba. I would take a melody or some sort of theme and I would chuck in some random accompaniment. I'll do some random strokes, just see what would work. see what would express what I wanted to express most clearly. Fortunately for us percussionists, because we know the technical limitations of both the instrument as well as the player, it's a lot easier for us to write pieces that really express what we want to express while still making it very idiomatic for the player. So I highly recommend going on the marimba and improvising some melodies or some ideas, some technical ideas to go along with your non-musical idea and just try finding associations. For example, if it's like a happy theme, then you want to find something that is maybe in a main major key and then see if you want to make it slow or fast, how technically advanced you want to make it. All of these things will come to you when you're improvising on the marimba. Tip number three, avoid making your piece too technical. Now in this day and age where notation software is cheaper, where everyone is self-publishing on their own websites, and even the traditional publishers are more open to accepting people from around the world, it's very easy to get music out very fast and we get caught up very regularly on quantity over quality. As a result, I've been sent a lot of pieces which sound something like this. Now, of course, I'm not trying to tell you what you can and can't write, but a lot of people have been writing pieces, especially their first pieces, where it's literally just a single technique played up and down the instrument. For example, lateral strokes. And I think this is where you have to make the clear distinction between a marimba solo and a marimba exercise. Now, a marimba solo definitely requires not just the technique, but also some musical virtuosity, some expressivity, and things that make the thing into a piece of music. Whereas a marimba exercise requires you to have the correct technique and to be able to get the correct technical sound, but you don't necessarily have to put any expression into it because if it's correct, it's correct, and if it's wrong, it's wrong. And the other thing you have to realize is that there is no shortage of marimba exercises in the world of marimba music. Like there are so many pieces written in the 70s, 80s, 90s that have all just got this thing of isolating one technique and moving it up and down the marimba. We don't need any more of those. So avoid making your piece into a marimba exercise. Try and make it into something that encompasses all techniques, encompasses all kinds of musicality and becomes a marimba solo. Tip number four, have a clear melody. If we asked you to identify an excerpt of marimba music based on the sound alone, no titles, no sheet music or anything, the only way you'd recognize it is because it has a melody. For example, you don't recognize Merlin because it has exactly eight bars of this passage. Now instead, you would recognize it because of this melody. So in the same way that you would learn a marimba solo, try and sing the melody of your proposed piece. Try and see if it's easy to remember, easy to figure out, and whether you can still hear it after you add all of the accompaniment in, because that is what is going to make your piece special. And finally, tip number five, don't be afraid. So before I wrote Path, my first marimba solo ever, I had all these marimba solo ideas that I'd even gone to the trouble of writing in ink as well as writing on Sibelius and they were just terrible, they sounded awful, they never headed anywhere, I never finished them, but it took me many tries to figure out what it was that I liked and what it was that I didn't like. So don't be afraid to fail writing pieces that don't sound good at all or don't work at all before you find the pieces that do sound good and do work. And similarly, don't be afraid to ask people what they think of your pieces, don't be afraid to show your pieces to people, and don't be afraid 
to avoid the stigma of the whole percussionist composer identity. When I first released my marimba solo path, my very first compositional debut, and I showed it to people in my school, in my university, and a lot of them weren't impressed because, you know, they were the real composers, they were the people who studied composition at university, they'd been doing it for years at school, but they just didn't like the idea that a percussionist could write their own music. They would say things like, Adam, you've never studied composition, you don't even know how to use modes, you don't know how to use all of these techniques that we've spent years learning, and you want to come here and write a marimba solo. This is the world of music, it should be inclusive to everyone, so don't feel like just because you're a percussionist, you're not able to write. I think anyone can write music if they spend enough time on it. Like, look how far we've come now with Path and Moon and the new marimba duo that's coming out very, very soon. Like, these are all pieces that are played by a lot of people around the world now, which I'm very, very grateful for. And a lot of the people who criticize me at school haven't had their works played by even one person. So anything is possible, guys. So if you want any more tips or any more advice about composition or just anything in general, please leave me a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can because I love to help people out with this sort of stuff. I want to see more music for marimba, more music for percussion written by younger people all the time. So please let me know. If you like these tips, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And please hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already to keep up with my uploads because we are almost on 9,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all the support again. And with regards to my brand new marimba duo, meet again for five octave marimba duo, which is coming out, I think, either next week or the week after because we're filming it this week. Thank you so much to everyone who copped our Team Australia bundle of music from Edition Spitzer. Thank you, Edition Spitzer, for that. I I hope you guys enjoy playing the music and I'm very very pleased to announce that with the release of my brand new marimba duo Meet Again, I'm going to be releasing yet another Team Australia bundle with Edition Switzer. So if you want to be the first person to cop that bundle, make sure you follow me on my Instagram, which is up here, the studio family. I always post stories on that Instagram, so I'll update you guys as soon as we know whether or not we're going to get a Team Australia bundle part two. And of course, if you like receiving these bundles, then please make sure you follow my friends at Edition Switzer, who are a publishing house in Denmark, who publish all my music on hard copy. They do a really, really good job and they help me get out these really, really cheap bundles to you guys. Like we make almost no profit from releasing these bundles. So if you want to get more, make sure you follow them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's episode and I will see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. Oh, 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 oh.